Hello and welcome to chapter 4.4 from the Introduction to Statistics Think and Do book. In this chapter we're going to look at the multiplication rule and these are probabilities of getting one event and another. So and is the magic word. The addition rule from the last chapter was used whenever you wanted the probability of one event or another. Now we're talking about and another. Okay, so I'm going to go into full screen mode here first before I get into details. Okay, and again, and is our magic word. For example, we look at these examples. Um, suppose you have a, a box of marbles. There are four red. There are four green. Right, so we have a total of eight marbles. Four red, four green. And I want you to look at the, the difference in these questions. Right, The first one... If you randomly select two marbles with replacement, so that means you take a marble out, look at the color, put it back in. Right. By the way, you're picking these things randomly. You're not looking. Um, what is the probability that you get a red on the first marble and a red on the second? All right, so it's the probability of red on the one on the first one and a red on the second. Right? If you select two marbles without replacement, what's the probability that you get a red on the first and a red on the second? So again, I'm looking at the probability of red on the first and a red on the second, but in this case, it is without replacement. And third, if you select two marbles with, again, without replacement, what is the probability of getting a red on the first and then a green? on the second. And notice the word and is in each one of these problems. So we're going to know to use the multiplication rule. Okay, so there's the preliminary. We'll, we'll answer these questions in a moment. We're just going to get into some definitions and notation. Um, so two events are independent if the occurrence of one does not affect the probability of the other. And if, um, if the events are not independent, they are called dependent. So if you look at example 1A, the events are independent. Here's why. In Sorry, 1A, this should be uh, 1A, B, and C. Sorry about the, the numbering mix-up there. So in this case, they are independent because I'm, the marbles are being chosen with replacement. So it doesn't matter what I get on the first draw. Um, it does not affect the probability of getting a red on the second, right? In the other two, since I'm not replacing the marble, it does affect the probability of getting a red on the second. Or the, you know, whatever you get on the first will alter the probabilities of, of what you get on the, on the second. So they are dependent. One, the second one depends on what happens on, on the first draw. So those are dependent events. Okay. Now here's the official rule and a little bit more on conditional. We did this two chapters ago, but just a preview. If you look at the probability of B, this is the, the line is the given line. The probability of B given A. It's the probability that event B occurs assuming that A has occurred. Right? And the thing to notice is, is that if, if A and B are independent, right? If the occurrence of one does not change the probability of the occurrence of the other, then the probability of B given A is just the probability of B. Because we don't care what happened on the, well, whether or not we got the first event A. Okay, so the official rule, multiplication rule, this one's always valid. The probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. And if the events are independent, the probability of A and B is just the product of the two probabilities. We don't have to worry about that conditional probability. And these are the same because if two events are independent, then the probability of B given A is the same as the probability of B. So these things are in fact the same when the events are independent. All right, so let's move on. Let's do those um, examples. We have our box of marbles. There are eight, eight marbles total, right? Four red and four green. We're going to calculate the requested probabilities. If you have 
two marbles, you're going to select with replacement. What's the probability of red on the first and red on the second? So we want the probability of red on the first, red on the second. Since these events are independent, meaning the probability of the second draw, the probability of getting red on the second draw, doesn't matter what happened on the first draw, right? So I just pro calculate the probability of getting a red on the first and then the probability of getting a red on the second. The first draw is 4 out of 8. You put it back in, you still have the same probability, 4 out of 8 on the second draw uh, for 0 0.250. And the 4 out of 8 came from 4 reds out of 8 marbles. Now if I ask the same question, only in this case I'm doing this without replacing it, then I have to take the probability of the red on the first times the probability of a red on the second given a red on the first. And that's because these events are not um, independent. You know, the probability of getting that first red is still 4 out of 8. But now you have to assume, getting a little carried away with my arrow here, 4 out of 8 for the first red, but now you have to assume, okay, I got a red, so there's one less red, so there's only three reds, and I'm, and I'm holding that marble, so there's only s seven marbles left. So instead of 4 over 8 times 4 over 8, it's 4 over 8 times 3 over 7. Right, so we get 0.214. And notice, we have a little better chance of getting two reds uh, with replacement. And we'll do the next one. Is your turn. What is the probability of going, by the way, very important, without replacement, so I'm not putting the first marble back. What is the probability of a red on the first and a green on the second? And again, since this is without replacement, these events are dependent. Okay. So that means I use the, the first form. So that's probability of red on the first and a green on the second. There's the word and. Probability of a red on the first times the probability of a green on the second given a red on the first. So that red on the first, 4 out of 8, right, they're starting with a clean slate, all 8 marbles are there, 4 are red. Now what's the probability of a green on the second? Well, there's only 7 marbles left, or 7 marbles left, um, but still 4 of them are green, because I'm holding a red, all right, you have to assume you were, you're given that you got a red on the first, so that means there's still 4 green left, so it's 4 out of 7. Um, 4 out of 7 times 4 out of 7, so we get 0 0.286, right? And um, so we can continue that on for, so that's just two things. So in this case, we had um, two events, and, and we, we multiplied the probabilities. What if we have more than two events? All right, suppose we have a sequence of events, more than two. Well, if the events are independent, very important, if the events are independent, then the probability of A1 and A2 and A3 and on and on and on is just the product of their probabilities, right? And so that's pretty easy to, um, to demonstrate. You know, if you have four, mar four red marbles, again, we're back to our box of marbles, four reds, four greens, so a total of eight. If you select three marbles with replacement, remember, so with replacement means that these events here are independent. Right? What is the probability of getting all reds? So one thing I want you to notice here is there's no, you don't see the word and in this question. And here, and, the word and is actually implied. By that I mean, if you're going to get all reds, you need a, a red on the first, and a red on the second, and a red on the third. So this is what we're looking for. And since these events are independent, because we're doing this with replacement, we just multiply the individual probabilities. 4 out of 8 times 4 out of 8 times 4 out of 8. Each one of those is 1 half, so it's actually 1 half cubed, or 0.125. Um, okay, so here's a your turn from the extended multiplication rule. Suppose you have an alarm clock, cheap one, 
not that reliable. And it works 90% of the days. Right. And we'll assume the days are independent. You know, it might work this day, not the next few days in a row. So, so we'll assume that these um, working days in a row are independent. If it doesn't work the one day, it's, it does not uh, change the probability of it working the next. Um, so I ask, what is the probability of it working five days in a row? So that means it has to work on the first day, W sum 1, and work on the second, and work on the third, and work on the fourth, and work on the fifth. So there's five of these things. So that's the probability that it works on the first times the probability that it works on the second, dot, 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 all the way up times the probability that it works on the fifth. So basically what that is, the probability that it works on the first day is 0.9, right, at 90%. The probability that it works on the second day is 0.9. The probability on the third is 0.9, on and on and up. So it's 0.9 times 0.9 or 0.9 to 0.9, 0.9 to the fifth, which is 0.590. And again, this, this, this particular problem, we do have to assume that the events are independent. All right, if it, if it works on Tuesday, that does not affect the probability that it will work on Wednesday. Okay, so here's the extended multiplication rule for dependent events. The notation is atrocious, so we're actually going to skip the notation and go right to an example. We have our same box of eight marbles, four red, four green, right? If you select three marbles without replacement, so we're going without, so again, as soon as you see without replacement, I know that these events are dependent. What is the probability of getting all red marbles? Again, here the and is implied. The probability of getting a red on the first and a red on the second and a red on the third. So, so what you do, this is sort of like a game of pretending. So what we do is we say, all right, since these events are dependent, I'm going to consider that each sequentially one, each event occurs as you move along. So there's the probability of the first red, 4 out of 8. Now you have to pretend, all right, I'm holding a red. So there's only 3 reds left, and there's only 7 uh, marbles left. So that's the probability of that second red, but now I need a third red, and so there's one less red, I have, now I've got the red on the first and the second, so there's only two reds left, and only six marbles left. So you have to multiply these three fractions together, and you get 0 0.0714. Right. And if you look at that, getting three red marbles in a row is much greater with replacement. So this is without, that's pretty small, right, 0 0.0714. When we did this with replacement, we got 0 0.125. Right. If you think about it, to get three in a row without replacement, it gets pretty small. You know, the probabilities start getting smaller here. All right, what about um, the your turn? I'm going to select four marbles without replacement. What is the probability of getting all red? So I need that red on the first and a red on the second, red on the third, red on the fourth. So we're going to continue with this game. There's that first red times the probability of the second red. There's one less red, one less marble. Now you pretend that you got a red on the first and the second. There's that probability of a red on the third. And then on the fourth there's only one red marble left and only five marbles left. So your probability is 0 0.0143. So if there's eight marbles, four red, four green, it's uh, pretty unlikely that you're going to draw four reds in a row without replacement. Um, so here in this case, so if you notice, the, the rule, the multiplication rule is different depending on whether the events are dependent or independent. But sometimes that change in probability is so small that we just treat dependent events, which have that probability of uh, B given A. All right, so here's the two. This is the dependent event. Probability of A 
times the probability of B given A. And if they're independent, it's just the probability of A times the probability of B. So this one, the independent rule is a little easier. And sometimes this change is really difficult to um, ascertain. So here's the official rule. If the sample size, or if the number of draws you're taking is no more than 5%, 5% or less, we'll treat the selections as being independent even if they are made without replacing. And here's what I mean. Here's an example of that. Suppose you know that 85% of the U.S. workforce, right, it's a lot of people, right, millions and millions and millions, right, they, um, 85% of them um, drive to work. Now, what is the probability of randomly selecting three different people? So that different means without replacement. All right, whenever you say select three different people, you can't get Tom and Tom and Mary, right? So there has to be, once one person is selected, that person is um, out of the pool. Now, technically, um, that's without replacement, so it's the, the events are actually dependent. But that change, you know, you have to assume you got the first driver, and now there's one less driver in the U.S. workforce and one less um, member of the workforce. So that 85% has changed just too slightly to mess with. And so what we do, we look at our, we're taking three drivers, right? We're taking three different people out of the total U.S. workforce. There's millions, right? So this thing is certainly smaller than 5%. It's a tiny little number. So we will assume that the events are actually independent. And so the probability of the first driver or the first um, member of the workforce being a driver is 0.85. Well, that does change the probability ever so slightly of the second driver being, or the second member being a driver. It's insignificant. It's, it doesn't change it enough because our, our sample size, our three workers, is just smaller than 5% of the total population. So there's the probability of the second, and then the probability of the third driver. 0.85 cubed or 0.614. Okay. So, so this is not that important, but I sort of like it. <laughs> right. So, here's the idea: the multiplication rule without a sequence of events. So we we use this multiplication rule for a sequence of events in the word and, but it actually works for just for the word and. And so here's the idea. Suppose you um draw one card from a deck. You know, one card is going to be randomly selected from the deck. What is the probability that it is the jack of hearts? So the idea here is that you are looking for the probability of a jack and a heart. So we should be able to use the um, multiplication rule, right? So we take the probability of a jack. There's four jacks, 52 cards times the probability that it's a heart given that it's a jack. Well, if I know it's a jack, there's only four of those. And of those four jacks, only one is a heart. So when I take four out of 52 times one fourth, I get one out of 52, and that's the probability of getting the jack of hearts. And you could have told me that without going through all of this um, math. But the idea is that the multiplication rule actually does work even whenever you're not, uh, even whenever you don't have a sequence of events. So that's chapter 4.4. And we're all done. And so I'll see you in chapter 4.5. Having a little bit of trouble stopping the recording. Come on. Come on. Try this one more time. Hmm.
one more try. It was, took too long to redo.